Now this is going to be part two of our Yetman Honda project. Now, I came down early this morning for two reasons. I wanted to see how our primer was drying up. I brought it in last night, put it up by a heating vent. Looks ready to sand. We still have some things to work on this and I'll try to put all the little things that I think might be helpful on this video for prepping a part for actually painting. Now we may or may not be able to paint today. They were predicting 40 mile an hour gusts and when I went to take the garbage out after breakfast it looked like it was a lot more than 40 mile an hour gusts out there. So, but nothing will stop us from getting this to the next step of preparation. And it's the preparation on these parts that takes time and energy. The painting of them is actually a very small part of it. So what we have to decide right now is how much work we're willing to put into a, uh, the restoration of this part. Because these parts aren't really available anywhere else, I think it is worth bringing it back to even better than new condition. There's a couple of, I kind of show these up close, a couple of uh, pieces missing here, chunks. As I look in the front, there's a couple of low spots here need to be addressed. A couple of chunks here, even though we did sand this out, it usually requires several sandings to get these real nice. And because we have time available today, it's usually nice to do this along the edge too, along the edge here. Now to fill in a lot of those parts, there's two ways to do this. You can use that red material that uh, I'm not crazy about, or they have the two-part stuff. I'm going to use the two-part on this. Now let me show that up close. And there's several materials you can use for this kind of work, and I want to show each one of them. This is the best one there is, and it's two-part. You have to mix a hardener with it. It's... Uh, let me just show it. It's kind of a creamy color. Once you mix the hardener, of course, it changes color. Depending on the dye that's in a hardener, it can be blue, it can be red, there may be even green, I don't know. Um, then you have what I think is the less, the less good of the materials. And this is the red material that most people call red lead. If you have a deep gouge, and some of those are deep gouges, so I'm going to try to use this material if I can. This is, I should put it this way, this is the stuff that you see on California car shows where they paint the whole car with Bondo and then block sand it out. Well, some of those gouges are pretty deep, so that may be the material of choice. But the trowels that you use to put it on, trowel being this, what I do is, and another good trick, let me just show this if I can because the idea of what we're doing here is to share information. Take a sanding block or a belt sander before you work on it. It's like sharpening a razor blade. It just makes it a lot nicer and gets any of the chunks off from the time before. Or if you're really good, if you want to be really cute, you can wipe this all down with acetone right after you use it because basically all this material hardens like all polyester resin material. It hardens from a couple of drops of hardener. So no matter which part, one of these two parts you use, this is always, you always have to squeeze and knead the tube because what happens, as you can see, it usually needs to be pretty well, uh, I should actually show this. You really don't want it to sit, you want to maneuver it around a little bit. The cream hardener that comes with it is fine, we just have a bigger amount because we use more of it. The more you put in, the quicker it's going to kick off and since we have a lot of time to work on this. I don't want it to kick off fast. I want it to take its time. It'll give me a little more work time. You want it to turn to a universal color where there's no stripes and you definitely don't want any white spots in here. Very similar to the Bondo you buy in a can, except the Bondo you buy in a can is just not a higher quality. This is a much nicer quality of material to work with. Again, always the ones with the hardener are better than the ones without the hardener. That's for sure, in my opinion, anyway. Now, once I have that material like that, the next step is, and it's a business card is fine, the trowel is fine, any number of things that you can put this on is very usable. I want to go around the whole part candling it. Doesn't matter what you use, we're going to sand it all down. 
but this will fill in real nice. And what we'll do is we'll go work on some other project because what happens with this if you sand it in 10 minutes, it's, yeah, it sands, but it takes forever. If you let it dry for a while, here's a little spot up here. I know this camera does not have a good macro lens. There's, but by putting a little bit less than a normal amount of hardener in there, it's gonna give me some extra work time. Now it looks like Bob Nivola has an old Honda windshield we, in case we can't find one of these on the internet, but then somebody found, maybe it was Art, somebody found out that you could buy the windscreen for these still. If that's the case, it just would pay to buy it, of course. Because you'll spend five times the amount of time it would take. And of course you feel this getting hard at some point in time, and you just mix another batch. And it's the edges that get to be a little bit, a little bit difficult to get them right in the edge. Looking around, any other spots? Because now the sand out of this part, when I go to sand this, and when I wet sand it, I'm going to be very, very fussy and try to get every little divot, every little thing that can be repaired out of it. It should be pretty labor intensive, but it'll be worth it. Now I have to look up to the light to see this. And I'm candling it carefully. As soon as you feel it getting, getting <laughs> difficult to spread, you know you have to mix another batch. Actually, that's gonna t that looks pretty good. Little spot there. And I don't think we're going to get to paint today unless that wind calms down some. It is very difficult to paint when the wind is blowing that much. They said the gusts were up to 60. It felt like it felt pretty good to me. Okay, just oops, just some basic information that some people may or may not know. All of these two-part things, if it's two-part polyester resin where you put a couple of drops in and that hardens that, that's a totally different thing than epoxy where you mix equal amounts. But both families of materials respond to heat. Heat will accelerate their curing. Cold will delay it. Same thing with the urethane paint. Paint on a cold day, it takes longer to dry. Anything that's catalyzed, heat, because it's a molecular reaction, the heat, start the molecules or whatever, who knows if it's pepperoni bouncing into each other doesn't really matter you don't really need to know that what you need to know is heat will always make it cure a little bit faster now I'm not in a rush today because I have a time window here that's going to give me plenty of time but I I did want to share the information the red material the and this is the material I like to use the two-part material the red material formerly known as red lead back from the good old days, what that material tends to do, it shrinks. If you put it on too thick, it makes valleys. Uh, it's really, I always use the analogy, it never goes on thicker than a piece of paper. And even if you do, if you try to fill a big divot like this one here with that red material, put it on in thin layers if that's all you have, or even better, the two-part material doesn't do that. It's less prone to that shrinking and, and when you're all done you sand it and it, it has a valley in it. So I always prefer this material if we if we had a hot day, if we were doing this in the summer, once I have the material in place, I'd like to put it out in the bright sun. The sun will cure that and usually they say about 20 minutes to dry. On a summer day, that might be 10 minutes. And on a winter day down here, maybe 30 minutes. But cold, it takes longer, heat accelerates it. That's the only thing you really have to know. Now what I always do is I always, I always use my little, uh, the, the part that I mixed so I can see that this is now hard. Here we are 15 minutes later. This is, this is plenty hard. The part from this, I can take it off. Now I know I'm ready to sand.
Now, another thing a lot of people don't know, but I'd, I'd share any information here, is material when it's thick like this. You see how thick that is? This material will harden a lot quicker than if I make it paper thin. A big mass of epoxy will cure a lot faster than if you spread it out thin. That's good information to know. So just the fact that this piece has hardened that quickly, where it's, where it's paper thin, it may not really totally be hard yet. But since we're going to wet sand, we'll do a little test on one of the thinner spots. Once we know it's okay, then we've probably got a half hour, 40 minutes of sanding that part. So what I'm using now is 400 wet and dry Indasa sandpaper. I wish they would sponsor me and send me a uh, free sandpaper. I'd give them a lot, enough plugs, that's for sure. But it is good sandpaper. So I want to take a test spot just to make sure this is totally dry and ready to sand. It doesn't matter what spot. It's a hard block. And I don't, when I'm done, I don't want to see any of this material. Just what's in the, what's in the canyon, in the divot, or whatever the low spot is. Now, if you had the choice of letting the material dry overnight, that would probably make it easier. The paint will come off easier. And let me just show this. Again, I'm not sure my macro lens is really up to snuff here, but... Let me just show this. Because we're working with a hard block, we'll hopefully get rid of all the low spots. Let me just see if we can show this. So we want the only material left is actually in the little valleys. We started like this, and when we wound up, we have just what's in the valley. So now it's a question of maybe. Uh, just getting the rest of the bondo around the edges, around the corners, getting that as flat as can be. And I think the next step after that, maybe even with the wind blowing, I'm going to try to get another coat of primer on this. So if you follow the sequence of, of how I do it, and the results are usually pretty good. It's a hard block first. That gets everything, it skim coats everything right to the, so it's flat. But of course, everything in this part has a curve. So this block, the soft block now, is going to allow this to follow the contours a little bit better. And then the final thing is we'll go over the whole part by hand. And that should bring us up to where we're ready for the next coat of prime. And when I took my coffee break, I looked outside and I thought, that, I thought we were going to blow away here. It's unbelievable. And I was hoping we'd get a gap in the uh, in our little mini hurricane here. But one day it rains, one day we have wind. Life in northern Jersey. Anyway, the soft block is real good. And as I go around, it's very important to get all the edges in that trough that will be the windshield, assuming we can get one. But if you understand how the steps work, the hard block gets rid of the valleys, this block gets the, the contours, and then your final hand sanding just dresses everything off for the next coat of primer. And we should be at that point, or we should be soon, ready to put the color paint on. I assume this is going to be black, but I want to verify it with Chuck first, because these bikes look, the ones on the internet, there's silver, red, and black. And we have all three colors of paint, of course. But, you know that old saying, if you can dream it, we can do it? And for old Amar racers, dreams are all we have. All right, so we're coming up on, now this is going to be ready for some hand sanding. But this is an old trick I learned from John Pothia. Rubber gloves or a piece of, of rubber, um, rubber, a piece of uh, the thin plastic, like a rubber glove is made out of. That 
that allows you to feel it is a spot right here as I say it allows you to find little imperfections in the paint and he did his whole Corvette so he did a lot of square footage if you look at that Murphy video you'll hear that's a lot of work to do a car a lot less work to do a motorcycle but your hand now can find a little mistakes anything you think is a mistake actually this looks pretty good considering what we started with was a 50 year old part I think it's gonna play out just great the last step on this is gonna be just hand sanding just go over the whole part again and that gives us if you do it in the three steps that I laid out it seems to me that would work the best if you do the hand sanding first you're just wasting your time but again it depends and and that's always in the eye of the beholder if you're just looking to paint something you know you want to paint a uh, a part and just have it look good from six feet away which I, a lot of people do and then they or they want to flip the bike they just want to make it look decent well but but our goal here is always to have things show quality if possible if it's within the budget the mental budget now when we get ready to prime this this I'll do the same steps the prep soil clean it up hope I don't get blown away when I go out there and you might have noticed in the course of doing this project from the time we took this over again most important thing radiusing edges edges are where paint starts to peel it doesn't really matter the, the condition of the part you start with what matters is that you get the prep up to the point that you put the, the base coat the color coat on if that's right that guarantees you you got the deck so stacked in your favor when you have a foundation that's like building a house and you build it on marshmallows and uh, pretzels and stuff if if it's not solid boy you might have just spent that that last amount of time whatever amount of hours effort the money the time and it all can go down a drain in one stroke at a pen it never pays to shortchange the prep the prep is a lot of hours it's a lot of work and in the end it always pays you might have thought I was kidding about the wind out here. It is really gusty. And it's going to be a challenge to get this the way I want it. But we'll, we'll definitely rise to the occasion. I, I hope. So, anyway, after all this prep, it's been prepped. Oh my god, this is really cool. Wow. But if I can just get this in the garage drying overnight, it's definitely not going to be we have a big change of weather. So, so much fun. Okay, now see there's a gap in the wind right now. I can really go crazy, but you never know when it's coming. Oh, come on, stay for one minute more. Oh my God. I wish I had a sailboat. Anyway, once this dries, we'll let this dry overnight. And I think we'll be ready for some black paint. This looks pretty, actually looks really good. Amazing. Again, same as yesterday, Rust-Oleum self etching primer. Now I just take a lot of, a lot of I, I guess joy out of the fact that this is a 50 year old part that a lot of people don't think could be restored to way better than new. This will be way better than new when I'm done with it. Now it's just a shame that uh, the wind made this as difficult as it has but again things like bad weather, the wind, cold, snow, they don't stop you from doing these projects. They just make them take a little bit longer. And we're at the end of the second day of working on this part. 
Now, when it comes to doing a tank, we're pretty much going to replicate all of these things, but first we have to clean that tank, and Chuck has to make a decision how he wants to do it, with what materials. It's just pointless to paint a tank and put all the work, all the time, all the energy that goes into any of these projects, and it doesn't matter which one it is, and, and then have the tank leak. So it should be the next time we get to work on this, we should be able to get this, put the whatever color Chuck chooses. I think he wants black, but I'm not sure. And get the clear on it, and then we can concentrate on the tank. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the video. Hope you enjoy all these old restoration projects. I've got four of them registered historically. And I, in, I have enjoyed doing every one of them. It just couldn't be a lot more fun than this. At this point in my life, this really keeps me busy, keeps me happy. Anyway, thanks for watching.